Good afternoon, everybody. This is Dennis Wilburn with the Active Trend Traders. Welcome to the How to Make Money Trading Stocks, uh, the twin program to the one we do on Mondays, which is um, a free webinar uh, called After Market Monday. Joining us from uh, Zurich, Switzerland is Michael Bishop. Good afternoon. Good evening, Michael. And so want to remind everybody that all the materials that we do present are for training purposes only. Traders should always pay per trade any new method prior to the risk of their own personal capital. What are we after with this really? Uh, There's a little bit about who I am. And I'm now back living full time in Hawaii, which is great. Um, just a, remi a reminder and a remembrance. So, you know, expectations must be confirmed by pr price action to prove valid. Oftentimes, if, if you have a tendency to over-anticipate getting into trades or uh, under-anticipate under getting out of trades uh, and the price action passes you by, it's because it, it's, it's, you know, you need to work on interpreting your price action better. What are we after today? One, uh, our objective is to do a timely, actionable intel review at the end of the week. Uh, it basically, it joins together with what we do on Monday, where we identify some, you know, a few stocks with the potential of uh, moving for the week. Now, of course, our premium members with Active Trend Trading, they'll get the uh, uh, text alerts and all that kind of stuff for the uh, uh, the entities uh, that we are, in fact, trading for the week and the um, email alerts. Uh, so we're going to do a real quick market review, stocks, ETF, setting up for um, – uh, setting up for going into next week, and if we have time, what else? We limit this. We try to keep this within 10 to 15 minutes, and so it's important that we move very, very quickly. Um, I found this really good quote from my uh, Investor Business Daily, Michael. It says, "What triggered the trouble?" That was this was basically yesterday's market where we had a really, you know, quick mm -hmm. sell-off, and then and then basically getting a pretty nice little rebound today. But this is some market watchers attributed to valuations, and and those who have been watching uh, the Wednesday night. Um, uh, training sessions you know that Mike Traeger has been talking about valuations for what seems like forever, and um, uh, and also the run up since the November fourth uh, low has gone too far. You know, has it gone too far? We'll see. But it, Nasdaq is up 27 points, 27 percent. S and P up 19, Dow up 21. And I want you to remember as we go into the assessment of this evening's um, or today's market, there has not been a 10 percent pullback for now in excess of 280 days. And so we're pushing past a half a year uh, into almost three quarters a year. No pullback. And that, you know, um, a 10 percent pullback would probably be a good thing for the uh, market because it helped flush out the weak holders, especially if the moves entailed new leadership. And as you're very much aware, if you've been following um, the IBD um, uh, stocks and that kind of stuff or just watching the fangs, everybody seems to be both foreign and, and domestic seem to be wanting to get into the fang stocks. Of course, that's Facebook. Uh, Amazon, Apple, Google, uh, or Alphabet, as you would uh, call it, uh, Netflix, and uh, I may be missing one. But, uh, but Michael, you, you watched you watched the meltdown yesterday from Europe. What what did you what were your takeaways from it? Well, I was kind of surprised because especially the Russell and uh, the Nasdaq too, mm -hmm. it, it seemed to me that uh, they pushed uh, through the last uh, line of resistance, or level, right. level, uh, level of resistance, 
and and then this kind of suddenly reversal and then uh, at the end of I think in the last two hours the bias came back yep again so I I, I don't want to to, to, to over interpret this I'm so, so I'm, I'm very curious about uh, I mean today was it was a non-event day but uh, maybe next week we get some some more clearance and uh, yeah but it's it's exciting I mean uh, many earnings and uh, what I uh, so there were I think two uh, things that uh, as a European uh, are, are very important or, or just just uh, nice events. One is uh, this uh, uh, the, the downturn of the German car makers, okay. and the other thing is uh, that uh, Swiss franc. I mean, it was just going up, up, up towards the dollar and towards the euro, and now uh, that it's kind of a ninety degree curve. So uh, okay. You can also look at the chart. So, so, well, here we are with the S and P, and this is what the Michael was talking about yesterday. Is basically um, the the stock, the market started up up nicely yesterday, but then reversed lower, ran hard down back to a level of support here at the 2460. We had identified that 2460 level on Wednesday evening, and then just got there and just bounced like a, like one of those um, uh, super balls right you know zipped right off of the uh, uh, lows back up above the eight day moving average but then today we get a, a little bit more of a breakdown get a gap down which is not you know you know that you know not necessarily a healthy move a couple of things that I'm looking at is one we do have the momentum you know moving into you know rolling over uh, of interest, if you're wondering how to utilize, you know, one of the other ways to utilize this market forecast is look for this negative divergence that seems to set up in the uh, short and the intermediate term, um, which can basically lead to the upper longer term momentum rolling over. But as you see, we get higher highs. This did not put in higher highs. We get a nice little roll over here. And TSI has now rolled over. Well, what's happened? Go back and just take a real quick look at what happened the last time, few times that the TSI turned over. On the S&P, you get, you know, a couple of things. One, we, on one instance, you get a real quick correction down just to the bottom of the Keltner channel rebound. In the, on, in the other one, we get kind of a sideways move, a little bit of a pop, and then a sideways drifting lower move back down to where? 50-day moving average, which turned out to be the place to buy it. Uh, until we get, um, you know, until something different happens, we have to be prepared to buy the pullbacks. And I would like to see us get a nice little pullback range that actually took the TSI down into the lower reversal zone and then get the rebounds and then have it matched up against uh, a good baseline or support base uh, defined by either the moving average. And so at this point, that's what we'd be waiting on with uh, uh, with, S with the S&P, uh, if you are selling calls against the S&P, um, you know, right now uh, for, for the spiders, we're probably looking about the 24, uh, 247 to 24650 level to sell your sell your calls with the expectation that this resistance up here is going to hold. Here's the NASDAQ real quickly. No, that's te how did that get to be Tesla? I wrote NASDAQ. <laughs> how about that? My, 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 uh, there we go. It has a mind of its own. Really nice. Well, again, a big, huge down day yesterday. NASDAQ, uh, nice rebound off the 20 day moving average. It did result, though, in a bearish engulfing that engulfed one, two, three four days worth of past effort right off the top of the Keltner channel and uh, those of you who have studied Keltner's we've got some you know if you're a premium member we've got some good training sessions and, and reviews that talk about Keltner channel and what how they tend to operate uh, in that 
price action oftentimes reaches the top of the Keltner tenor, pulls back into the midsection of the Keltner, which is which is demarked here by the 20-day moving average, and then rebounds from here, uh, from there, or it'll go all the way down to the bottom and rebound from there. And so it's just something to play a pay attention to, especially in a market that is, you know, just slightly trending. Uh, or moving sideways, you get you get these r runs from the upper uh, Keltner down to the bottom of the Keltner, back up, partly you know approaching the top, running back down, and just you know pay attention to those. What are we looking at today? Well, one, we've got some negative divergence going on the S on the Nasdaq here, as you can see, as we're pushing up to make new highs. We have a, a spinning top doji working up, working its way out, which may in fact also turn out to be a bearish harami on a weekly chart, which would say, hey, you know, we we may be getting a pullback back down into past support. Well, where's past support? Well, we've got some here at, uh, you know, about the 5,800 level, and of course back down uh, at the 50-day moving average, and then also down here at the 5,600 level uh, is the levels of support. Uh, TSI turning over, momentum turning over, and again, watch, take a look at the NASDAQ, what has happened the last few times that we've gotten a rollover with the uh, TSI and momentum. Uh, it basically has, has in fact stalled out for a while, and in some cases it stalled out uh, earlier this year between uh, June, uh, first part of June to the first part of July before it ricocheted back up. Our, we are also in a time of year where August has a history of being the most volatile month of the year. Leading into uh, leading into September, which tends to be the worst performing um, uh, a month of the year. So, with that said, it's not saying don't take a trade if you have a proper setup, but just be aware that uh, the the expect you know your expectations may be a little bit muted on what can be expected for the for the entity. So. Uh, anything on NASDAQ or uh, S&P, Michael? Um, not really, but um, I, I, I find, I, I'm pretty astonished that I find a, a lot of uh, kind of small trading opportunities in, in uh, stocks. And what I see as a tendency is that we have some really uh, stars like, uh, like like the FANG stocks, yeah. And now with this and the last earnings week, there are more and more kind of losers which are in a pretty stable downtrend since weeks. Yes. Yeah. Um, it, it seems like more of the, you know, more of the the stocks are in fact in that downtrend. The you know the the hyper strong stocks are holding up. I mean, it almost seems like. There, yeah, there is some sector uh, rotation, but yeah, I, I agree with that wholeheartedly. So, uh, Russell, Russell got all the way up to the top of its little channel here, but look what's going on here. We got a, you know, kind of a shooting star type pattern on, you know, last week, and we're getting a similar type pattern today. So we've got hard uh, 14.50. As your, you know, your hard um, uh, resistance area, and we broke back down into the channel. The if symmetry would hold, we would anticipate it to drift further down and hit the bottom of the channel, or try to stop somewhere on the moving averages. And if we close below the 20-day moving average day, watch out for the 50. If we miss that one, watch out for the strong level at about the 1400 level on the Russell. Uh, I still remember Russell going into the end of the year. I'm talking about the October time frame. Uh, tends to be the better performer through the last two and a half months of the year. So again, that's what we're looking at here. A little bit of negative divergence here. Looks like the longer term. Uh, TSI is also trying to roll over. Matter of fact, we get a 
eh, not quite a uh, um, uh, rollover drop here yet, but uh, we'll we'll be watching that. If we take out these lows, the 14.25 level, which is just about where today's lows are, then anticipate that fall, you know, back down here to the 14.20, 14.10, and then the 14.00. Uh, oftentimes, they just be aware, and this is something that's kind of interesting. The Russell will often run in $10 segments. In other words, it will bounce uh, um, from from around like 14.50 down to 14.40 down to 14.30, uh, and so it will overshoot a little bit, but yeah, you can kind of use that as a rule of thumb or a gauge on that. So that's what we've got. We'll be coming back to the moving out to those quickly. So as you can see, active trend trading, we're doing okay. Um, uh, we're up about 21%. And here's where the markets are. NASDAQ again and NASDAQ composite outperforming the other indexes this year to date. So what are we looking at? Uh, we actually got into two trades earlier this week, uh, CTRL and, uh, and FireEye, expecting a pre-earnings run. CTRL was looking pretty well. Both of them triggered the intraday yesterday, triggered their stop losses, and so uh, we bounced out of those with, uh, you know, below our max loss because typically we'll, we will give five up to 5%, but this stayed low. Nugget, you know, is Nugget getting ready to run? for its seasonal move. Uh, NVDA, NVDA and Tesla, those look really uh, good. Tesla has earnings next Tuesday, so I'm not opening any positions per se other than playing uh, volatility increases on Tesla. My strategy three trade on Tesla, where I'll be trying to sell, sell uh, premium against it, will be done on Wednesday of next week, on the 2nd, just before the close of market. Then take a look at Vive and S uh, and Shop. So just be aware of the reality of trend trading. Identify the trend. I de define the area of interest or value where you want to take action. If the mechanical side of your trade trading isn't working, check out the mental, physical, or spiritual side. So here's how the uh, individual sections of uh, strategy one, two, and three of the. And if you want to know what the strategy one, two, and three are, if you're new to active trend trading, you can go to the website. It's defined to describe there. Talked a little bit about seasonality uh, uh, in. And as you can see, typically the S&P, when it hits towards the end of July, tends to either come down, and this is a post-election year, but this covers 59 years worth of data, or it just slides sideways and stays sideways to slightly down in September, October time frame. Well, what is the flip side of that? This is what I talk about, the gold seasonality. Gold tends to hit its bottom in July and then rebound. Uh, if you're a premium member, please go and review uh, the training session we did. We revisited um, uh, seasonality last uh, last week or this week in our Wednesday night training uh, and also just basically did a, did an overlap chart showing uh, how seasonality has worked out so far this year. I think you'll find it very intriguing and also uh, a, a good uh, more or less testimony that the seasonality stuff is something that is well worth paying attention to. And so, okay. Let me, okay, before we get, let's take a real quick look at those stocks I, I, I mentioned. As we watch the, so uh, VEV, it has, it's already passed its earnings, and so it's holding up very nicely uh, uh, compared to the uh, other entity, uh, because compared to, it did have its big sell-off, big down day to day, but it's rebounding nicely off the 50, and so this is one that's going to be on my radar uh, going into next week, NVDA, another one. Uh, comes down yesterday, big sell-off yesterday, down to a support at 157. Now is doing a rebound. 
earnings coming up on uh, 810 uh, after market. Be looking to do a earnings trade on this somewhere between seven to ten days prior to that. Uh, that Tesla. Tesla, big sell-off yesterday from the 345 level, trying to regain some of that uh, today. This little uptrending uh, line that had been in place for, you know, almost oh, a little bit over a month period of time um, did take the hit yesterday but finished back up above it. And we're working hard to get back above the 820 uh, combo earnings next Tuesday. And so I am long a couple of calls on this. Uh, that expecting the, the uh, implied volatility to increase dramatically going into that. And I'll be opening up my strategy three position just prior to. So another, this just came on my radar, interesting little stock. It also has earnings coming up on the first, but shop um, basically you know, nice bounce off the 50-day moving average today. It may do a little bit of run up here to around $100 prior to earnings. Uh, we'll see if an intraday chart lets us in on that one. And then last but not least, now you're liking Baidu, right, Michael? Just quickly, what? well, what, what's not to like about Baidu? Uh, as it breaks out, and it, it almost achieved its what it almost appeared to achieve its upward move. But if we take this from there to there, by the way, I closed the the put of today again, <laughs> made forty percent. Okay, there you go. Okay, this gives us our upside based on this triangle formation. That gives um, basically Baidu. A upside target of about 237 and so while it is extended away from where you want to be buying it right now uh, just pay attention to it because there's still there's still some juice left in this move uh, but I be I would be aiming for midsection 207 to 210 uh, is when this when th this would become interesting to me so well, congratulations, Mike, uh, Michael, on that good trade on on and so um, on t Baidu. And so that's it for today. Uh, remember, we're still working on just explosive uh, growth for 2017. Um, tune in with us on Monday for the After Market Monday. And if you're a premium member, join us at 12 straight up. That's 12 California time for the final hour where we'll see if there's uh, anything she's shaking around to be able to uh, uh, trade. So with that, until Monday, aloha, trade wisely, trade profitably. God bless. Michael, thank you for joining us, buddy. Thank you. Have a nice weekend all together. Okay. God bless, everybody.